So here's my box from Garage Essay. Tell on the size, they <laughs> painted all over it. Let's just get to opening it. Oh, I got a handwritten note. I'll read that later on camera. That'll be some good stuff. So, first thing I see, besides that note, we got a sticker pack. Pretty cool. Let's check these out. Yeah! Son of a bitch, making me look weak as shit. Okay. Just some decals. This one says uh, built, not bought. It's kind of a theme of the channel. So what we got is we got a couple shirts. We got some rear shock enforcement plates, some tie downs, some rear poly bushings, and a strut bar. Let's see what we're gonna do. So this is all wrapped like neat, like nothing else I've seen. I'm gonna have to find something to cut this open with. This is uh... So, finally got this damn thing open. It's a strut brace from Gurajistic and the build quality is Really sweet, actually. Looking at these welds are good. And they've got this garagistic brand on the front and it's like laser cut and then tacked on there. And I didn't even know they did these on them. So I don't know, maybe it's a special thing, but that's actually really awesome. I'm excited to put this on the car. Let's put this over here. Moving on to the next one. So I've got little package here. These are my uh, rear tie downs. These go on like the strut, the bottom of the rear struts, and they're meant to be a tie down location to mount like ratcheting straps when you're getting towed or on a flatbed, and that kind of thing. So I'll install those whenever I uh, work on my rear suspension. But these are front a rear strut tower reinforcement plates and this is a huge problem on the E36 I am aware of. I don't know how big of an issue it is on the E30 but I'm gonna assume that it's a similar thing that happens to them but on the E36 the strut towers are sort of weak and over 200,000 miles you know bump 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 with worn out struts and even some like stiffer coilovers and things like that. They just tear out. So this is a good preventative measure. These are cheap compared to uh, welding in a new strut tower, which is, Jesus, I don't even know. But they're like uh, $150, $200 for a replacement and then you have to get it welded and then paint it. This is something that every E36 and I'm guessing E30 owner should be doing because it doesn't really cost you any time. You just unbolt the, the strut, install these. You can weld these in if you need to, but probably just kind of paint these and bolt them on. Next up. Oh, I got some t-shirts. probably see me wearing these in later videos. I like to uh, have some good shirts for, you know, just wearing whenever I 
work on the car, you know, stuff. I don't mind getting a little oil on them, but these are actually embroidered, so that's pretty sweet. Put these on later. Oh yeah, okay. So these are rear subframe mounts. These are the, the harder kinds, so I believe they're 95A durometer, so it's the urethane durometer. And these will go into the rear subframe and then these mount to the actual chassis. So in addition to these, I'll be getting some rear trailing arm urethane mounts and differential urethane mounts. So when I pull the old and worn out rear, sub, rear subframe, I'll replace all the mounts with these and I'll have a nice firm rear end because uh, who doesn't like a nice firm rear end? But I'm excited for that, gonna do that in the future. That's a good thing to do before you go turbo because if you go turbo and then you don't, you can rip out some, some fucking sheet metal and then it's just, Jesus, it's a real disaster. It's time to install the garage stick strut brace. I've had this a little while and I've been kind of eager to put it in, but now is the good time to put it in because I won't have to take it out to pull this uh, dump pipe and screamer pipe out. Let's do it. Basically, uh, a strut brace goes across your strut towers, bolts down, and then increases the structural rigidity of the chassis. Because in the rear, uh, the chassis still has like a full cage over it, so it's got a good geometry for structural rigidity. But when you come to the front, all you have supporting and keeping the towers rigid from bending up like this is the frame rail and then this body in front of it. You don't have anything over this area keeping it rigid. So a strut brace can be a good idea for just that making that little difference in the corners. Just a little difference but it can be noticeable on the track. Like if you go from no cage to full cage you will definitely feel a difference in the corners. So this is just like stage one of a cage, I would say. This is, this is like the beginnings of a roll cage. This is like the most basic thing to do. Next would be like a roll bar, then it would be a half cage, and then it would be a full cage. And by the time you have a full cage, that thing is going to be flat in the corners. No, no chassis flex, no nothing. So let's get this thing installed. So the job is you take off both these nuts on both sides that hold the strut body in. You just take them off like any other bolt. If you'll notice, a lot of times these are designed for like the factory sizing of the strut towers and spacing. So yeah, as you can see on mine, they don't quite line up perfectly. And that's totally fine. What happens is as the car ages and it sits on its own weight, the, cha the whole chassis will sort of deform just slightly. And you'll end up with these towers are a little bit closer than they are from the factory. Which further supports my claim of stiffening up the chassis with this bar. So, it looks like I'm going to have a hard time doing that. The idea is, I'm going to take a jack right under the subframe, and then just jack it up for that and let the weight of the sides hang, and hopefully that'll push it out, or let these towers sag out just a little bit. Okay, so these fit very tight. Some, uh, you might find it fits tighter on your car than on mine, but 
install is fairly straightforward. So I just take a screwdriver. There we go, flathead screwdriver. Then I can push it on, just like that. Just give it a good pry. Probably do the same on the other side. Sweet, sweet. Okay, so now it sits pretty happily, but it's a little bit, there we go. Fits pretty tight in this corner right here. But I've gotten it on this side, so I'm just gonna take the bolts, or the nuts, rather, sorry. Run them down. So, that took probably like, I want to say 10 minutes at most, honestly. Just undo the bolts, put it on sort of to do a little bit of, uh, what do you call it, massaging to get it to fit perfectly. And then after that, it looks great. It's a nice little addition to the motor, makes everything look nice. Adds a little bit of performance for stiffening the chassis and things. I like it. I like it. It's a good mod. They're not expensive, like 60 bucks. Normally these things are like, you know, like 200 bucks and things like that. And I just, I don't understand it for that price. But spending 60 bucks, throwing some pain on it, it's all TIG. You can see the quality of the welds pretty good. Anyway, just a quick little video. Whew. Hot in Texas. Whew. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Peace. So, okay, so basically, I really appreciate this note from Garagistic. It's really nice to see companies whenever they, uh, want to send me something, then I really appreciate this personal touch because some company, yeah, it, it's it's cool. You They send you something, you install it, and then people learn about it. But this is, it, it's going the extra mile and you say, okay, we actually care about our viewers and our business and we want to reach out to you. So basically this note reads, not only will you find top quality parts for your build, but you find after all the parts are gone and installed, what is also hidden in there is countless smiles, great times, and most importantly, the insurance of great quality as you rip around the track or Mexico. As they eloquently put it, as you get fast food. <laughs> but there's a little postscript at the bottom and it reads, we are very excited to see more videos in the future and keep up the great work. And I think that's really sums up this whole thing because yes, they, they sent me a couple of parts to put in videos and they're giving me more content for you guys, but in the end, it's, it's you, the company has actively watched the videos and they enjoy them and they are telling me right here that they look forward to more of them. So, I don't know. That just, that just sets it apart. I appreciate anyone who takes an interest in the build, and I appreciate all of you people watching the build. I still think it's kind of weird that people watch me build my car, but the reason I did this, this entire project, was because I remember when I was starting out, just building my, or when I started working on my E36 alone, 
I would read all the forums and I would watch videos and that's how I learned. And I said, people do not share enough of this information because it, it takes twice as long to do anything when you're filming everything. People, I know you've heard that before and it's true. It, it takes twice as long just to do the work and then it takes equally long as it took you to do all the work to edit it. But it's important for getting new people interested in these kind of things because I know, I remember when I was young, young, and uh, Mighty Car Mods had like just started, they were still in their awkward youth stages, you know, they were just getting on their two feet. And I watched this one video and it was called How to Make Your Car Faster for Free. And in the video, all they did was they stripped out the interior and I think they cut bits off the car and things like that. And they just weighed it all as it came out. And I had like not really an introduction to the concept of weight savings and track weight and stripping out until that point. And it was sort of those little things, oh, I just happened to cross this video that got me to look into it more and sort of set me on the path that I am now. Now, that being said, you can't narrow it down to any one aspect that changes like what you do with your life, but it's all these little things that add together to put me where I am now and working on this car, which I probably never would have been without the internet. Honestly, it's kind of weird. Like, you know those old school hot rodders, they knew some guy that knew some guy and then they just like watch them work. But now with the internet, I can do something on my car, film it, edit it, post it, and I have all of you people watching as I do it and learn and hopefully learning something and enjoying it and getting something out of it. And then I'm hoping just mostly that you all will show someone else. And then we can sort of keep a keep the car culture alive because I feel like a lot of people are so content with con the convenience of it all and the not interested in buying these old trashed vehicles and bringing them back to love and just showing it love and building it to be something special. So I don't know. I don't know if that's how everyone feels, but that's how I feel. So I know I totally, totally went off on a totally different path, but that's how I'm going to end this video. So see you later guys. Peace.